Hello friends, welcome to session number 6 of chemistry. As you all know, we have started with the 7th lesson of your syllabus that is elements of group 16, 17 and 18. We call them P block elements. In the last sessions, we learned about the general introduction, occurrence, electronic configuration, physical properties of elements of group 16, 17 and 18. As well as we learn about periodic trends of some properties. We learn about the anomalous behavior of oxygen and fluorine. And in the last session, that is session number 5, we have started with the chemical properties of elements of group 16, 17 and 18. To understood that, we must know about oxidation state of the element. We learn in detail about oxidation state in the last session. Still, we will revise. Now, oxidation state depends upon the general electronic configuration. Group 16 elements have general electronic configuration NS2, NP4. That means there are six electrons in the outermost shell. And to achieve stable electronic configuration, they require just two electrons. Hence, all the group 16 elements exhibit minus 2 as their common oxidation state and some of the elements also show positive oxidation states. Group 17 elements. They have general electronic configuration NS2, NP5. That means there are 7 electrons in the outermost shell. Hence, they require only one electron to fulfill their valence shell. Hence, all the 17 group elements, that is halogens, exhibit a minus 1 as their common oxidation state. Along with that, few elements, they also show positive oxidation states. Group 18 elements have general electronic configuration NS2, NP6 and as per octet rule, their valence shell is complete. Hence, they have stable electronic configuration. Hence, they are called as inert gases. Hence, they doesn't show any oxidation state. Up to this we have studied. Now we will actually start with the chemical reactivity of all these elements towards some common reagents such as hydrogen, oxygen, halogen and metals one by one. So we will start with chemical reactivity towards hydrogen. First of course group 16. Now elements of group 16 react with hydrogen easily to form hydrides. What are hydrides? The compound of any element with hydrogen is called hydride. And the formula is H2E. So the reaction will be like this, easy reaction. Where the E stands for element such as oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium and polonium. We have the formula H2E. Hence the hydrides will be like this. H2O, H2S, H2SE, H2T, H2PO. We are going to study the properties of these hydrides in detail. Now, the properties of hydrides of group 16. First compound, first hydride naturally is H2O. That means water. It is colorless, odorless, liquid. But the remaining hydrides H2S, H2SC, H2T, H2PO are colorless, bad smelling, poisonous gases. Do you remember H2S? Yes. H2S is bad smelling gas and we are all well aware of that. Other halides are same as H2S. That is all are in gaseous state, bad smelling, colorless. Only water, that is the first hydride is colorless and odorless liquid. So this is first property. Second property. All hydrides undergo sp3 hybridization. We learned in the last year hybridization of water. Oxygen undergoes sp3 hybridization with geometry angular because there are two lone pairs of electrons. The same way all hydrides of group 16 are angular in structure with sp3 hybridization of central atom. All the hydrides are weakly acidic. Third property, all the hydrides are weakly acidic. That means they form acid with water but the acid are very weak. Now about thermal stability. Thermal stability decreases from first hydride to last hydride, that is H2O to H2TO. Why? Because there is decrease in bond dissociation, enthalpy. Dissociation is separation. To separate or to break the compound, 
the energy required is called bond dissociation enthalpy now as we learned that h2o is water that is liquid and all other are gases naturally the thermal stability will be low hence it decreases in the order h2o to h2t because bond dissociation enthalpy decreases in the same order last property all the hydrides except h2o have reducing property g which increases down the group what is reducing property all of them contain hydrogen so hydrogen hence they show reduction or reducing property they bring about reduction but h2 as it contains along with hydrogen oxygen it doesn't show reducing property so these are the properties of hydrides of group 16 now we will see chemical reactivity of group 17 elements with hydrogen now again all these elements react with hydrogen easily to give the compounds known as hydrogen halides and the reaction they undergo will be like this out of which x stands for halogen that is fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine astatine as it is radioactive we don't consider that so hx means hf hcl hbr and hi these are the hydrides of group 17 element now we'll see the properties of hydrogen halides first property acidic strength of halogen acid increases in the order hf less than hcl then less than hbr and less than hi that means hi is the strongest acid and hf is the weakest acid why because of the decreasing bond dissociation enthalpy that means thermal stability in the order hf has highest thermal stability while hi has the lowest thermal stability because bond dissociation enthalpy in case of hf it requires highest why did that happen how it decides acidic strength now as the bond dissociation enthalpy required is more when hf is treated with water it releases very few h plus ions and as per arrhenius concept we know that more the number of h plus ions in aqueous medium stronger is the acid but as hf bond dissociation enthalpy required is very high and it is thermally stable it releases very few h plus ions in water hence HF is very weak acid as compared to HI, and that in the order HF is the weak, then HCl, then HBr, and then HI will be the stronger acid. Understood? So this is all about seventeen group element. Now group eighteen elements. Again, as we know, they are chemically inert, hence they don't show any reaction with hydrogen. now second reactivity will study that is reactivity towards oxygen first group group 16 these elements again react easily with oxygen to form oxides of two types first one is eo2 and second one is eo3 e stands for element again so sulfur selenium tellurium polonium they form two types of oxides EO2 and EO3. Now we will see EO2 type of oxide. Now in place of E, if we put any element, then we will get the oxides like O3, SO2, SeO2, TO2, etc. Now out of these oxides, ozone, the first oxide, and second one that is sulfur dioxide, are in gaseous state, while selenium dioxide and tellurium dioxide is solid. all these oxides are acidic in nature because they react with water to form acids for example so2 when treated with water form sulfurous acid with the formula h2so3 now second type that is eo3 type of oxides that means so3 seo3 to3 etc these oxides are also acidic in nature because when they dissolve in water they form acids SO3 with water gives H2SO4 sulfuric acid SeO3 with water gives H2SO4 that is selenic acid TO3 with water gives H6TO6 that is telluric acid now group 17 elements what happens when these elements are treated with oxygen they also react easily with oxygen to form oxides of variety of types 
but oxides of group 17 elements are unstable now we will see one by one the first member fluorine forms two types of oxide of2 and o2f2 however of2 is thermally stable at 298 kelvin second element that is chlorine forms oxides like cl2 clo2 cl2 o6 and cl2 o7 etc these oxides are highly reactive oxidizing agent and a tendency they have tendency to explode oxidizing agent that means they bring about oxidation when they are treated with another compound or element now out of these chlorine oxides clo2 is used as bleaching agent what is bleaching bleaching means decolorization to remove color so clo2 is used as bleaching agent in paper industry and textile industry as well as in water treatment that means to bleach paper pulp and textiles it is used third member that is bromine it also forms variety of oxides like br2 bro2 bro3 but they are least stable halogen oxides but again they contain excess of oxygen hence they are very powerful oxidizing agents iodine also forms variety of oxides like i2o4 i2o5 i2o7 etc which are insoluble solids and out of which i2o5 is very good oxidizing agent because it contains excess of oxygen so this is all about group 17 element group 18 elements as these noble gases they are chemically inert they do not react directly with oxygen now we will see reactivity towards halogen third reagent group 16 elements elements of group 16 they react easily with halogens because halogens are to the right side of the 16th group and they are more electronegative hence halogens easily react with group 16 elements to give large number of halides of the type ex6 ex4 and ex2 again e stands for sulfur selenium tellurium etc ex6 that means hexahalides tetrahalides ex2 that is dihalides we will see one by hexahalides of group 16 elements are sf6 sef6 and tef6 they are formed by direct combination and these all are colorless gases now the hexa hexahalides undergo sp3 d2 hybridization of the central atom and hence they have geometry octahedral now second type that is tetrahalides like sf4 seo4 t sf4 tf4 t cell4 etc all these halides undergo sp3 hybridization showing trigonal bipyramidal geometry trigonal bipyramidal geometry why because there is one lone pair of electrons now dihalides dihalides examples scl2 scl2 tcl2 etc these also undergo the sp3 hybridization but they show tetrahedral structure monohalides are also possible but they are dimeric in nature dimeric that means two molecules or combined to form a dimer the examples are s2f2 s2cl2 se2cl2 and se2br in monohalide form they are not stable but in the dimeric form they are stable like scl now we will learn about group 17 elements group 17 elements are halogens halogens react with halogens they react with halogens. that means halogens combine among themselves to form a number of compounds such as interhalogen compounds they are called interhalogen we are going to learn about interhalogen compound later in detail now the interhalogen compounds are of following types xx dash xx dash 3 xx dash 5 and xx dash 7 what does it mean where x and x dash both are halogens but x is the halogen atom with larger size while x dash is the halogen atom with smaller size 
we learn about the periodic trends the elements located below or to the lower side have larger atomic size and which are at the upper side have smaller size hence x x dash means the example will take clf because cl is located below fluorine it has larger atomic size that means x will be the halogen atom with larger size and x dash will be the halogen atom with smaller size so clf or brf3 brf5 i have seven these are the few examples of interhalogen compounds now the last group that is group 18 elements or noble gases they are as usual chemically inert but still krypton and xenon they react directly with fluorine to give their fluorides such as xenon difluoride xcf2 xenon tetrafluoride that is xcf4 xenon hexafluoride that is xcf6 all these xenon fluorides are crystalline colorless compounds and they sublime readily easily at 298 kelvin what is sublimation conversion of these solids directly into gaseous state after heating and all these are called powerful fluorinating agents as they contain excess of fluorine and the reaction will be like this so they form xenon difluoride tetrafluoride as well as hexafluoride so this is all about the reactivity towards halogen now the last reagent that is metals so we will see the reactivity of all these elements towards metal as usual we will start with group 16 elements now group 16 elements they almost contain non metals and with metals they easily react with to form corresponding compounds for example aluminum will form aluminum oxide if the any metal is treated with sulfur they form sulfide like copper sulfide some elements if they are compared with magnesium they form magnesium selenide like telluride so all these elements form corresponding compounds with metals easy reaction is there group 17 elements they also undergo very instant reaction with metals to form metal halides like sodium reacts with chlorine to form sodium chloride magnesium will form magnesium bromide like iodide so every reaction is possible because group 17 elements are halogens or non metals they easily react with metals and group 18 elements that is noble gases they do not react directly with metals so this is all about the reactivity of elements of group 16 17 and 18 towards hydrogen oxygen halogen and metals now time for assignment what will be the assignment this this time now you have to write the properties of hydrides of group 16 and 17 properties of hydrides of group 16 and 17 write down in a separate notebook thank you